Hello viewers and welcome to another session of Bentley Open Roads. Before we start, I would like to discuss few things that come to mind when we try to differentiate between Bentley Open Roads with similar software like Civil 3D by Autodesk. In Open Roads, the part of the project that are horizontal geometry 2D can be separated very well from 3D. In fact, it is proposed to create different drawings and use them as external references. Bentley is very powerful on the subject of external references. Let's say that if it is the heart of its operation. You can add an external reference from a DWG or DGN. It will directly recognize them in the new drawing. There is nothing else to do as in the case of Civil 3D with data shortcuts, synchronize them and so on. Civil 3D data shortcuts is a workaround but it is not completely fixed. Graphical editing of linear entities is way better than Civil 3D objects, let alone being able to create dependencies between horizontal geometry. In Civil 3D, there is only connected alignment command but it must be between two axes and the connected alignment does not correctly create its dynamic vertical line with curves, which Bentley does perfectly with its quick profile transition. Bentley separates the commands for horizontal geometry very well from vertical geometry and that is a plus point. The civil 3D offset alignment is created when you create the offset alignment and this is great inconvenience due to many reasons. If you want to use another grid line for your main axis, you will have to generate your offset alignments again and therefore your offset profiles. It happens because when creating the offset alignments, a main axis profile was assigned to it and then it can no longer be replaced once the offset alignment is created. So if you want, to make project alternatives using other elevations of your axis, the possibility of variation you have will be lost if you have to regenerate out of phase alignments. In open roads, this is possible as main axis is assigned an active profile and it can be changed with a click for another profile that acts as the active profile and offset profiles of the out of phase alignments are updated by themselves. Another thing is in cyclical selection, which in open roads uses the tabulator key. In Civil 3D, I like more to be able to activate or deactivate that function, and that is better highlights which entity and tells you which one it is. Another good thing in open roads is the dependencies can be created between profiles and even lines or points drawn in the profile view. And not only that, something that is missing in Civil 3D is that if you project points or they are of intersection of axes, the end of a profile cannot be anchored to a point or end of a profile, which can be done in open roads. In open roads, the corridor does not have automatic regeneration and must be processed manually. But in some cases, it only processes how to move the start or end station of the region. Change or edit template. Clipping corridor is a good option in open roads. It can be done by drawing a closed polygon. In Civil 3D, on the one hand, you have to make a closed contour for the corridor surface and on the other hand, you have to make your sub-assemblies use targets so that this queue, which is much more complicated. You can make a linear entity show a block, etc. Such as lampposts, security barriers, and so on. At the moment that you are designing in open roads using feature definitions, while in Civil 3D, it can be done with Dynamo. One thing missing from open roads is the contextual options ribbon, 
when you select an object. But when you select an object and wait for a few seconds, a toolbar appears next to the cursor with the most related commands. Sometimes you hit the object, the bar doesn't appear or takes a while to appear. This is something that lacks in open roads. Another thing I find missing in open roads is the highlighting of the objects when they are selected. In Civil 3D, when you select a surface, all of it is highlighted. In open roads, only its parameter is highlighted and that highlighting is not even quite noticeable. In Civil 3D, we cannot link the start or end of the region with points or line ends. To be dynamic, Open Roads has this feature. You can anchor the start or end of your region with an entity, for example, the end of a line. And in fact, that is part of the intelligence of the civil cells. Civil 3D has good management and administration of projected objects in views or section views, in which you can see a table with the elements that exist, change their style, and so on. In open roads, if you project entities to the profile model or intersection points, you have no way to get a table to see how many they are. Open roads allow you to add break lines to surfaces from a linear entity and its active profile. In Civil 3D, this is not possible unless you create a feature line from alignment or profile. In Civil 3D, we cannot create an offset alignment with offset is equal to zero, which can be done in open roads. Another thing in open roads is that it does not ask you for the data from the command line and you can leave the test value as long as you don't click accept since it has its own little window for entering relative data to the applied command. For example, if you are going to draw a profile and put a slope of 4% on it, you can see how it looks as if it were a preview. and if you don't like it, you can put a value like 3% or 5% on it and then accept the command. In Civil 3D, you have to accept to finish the command and see how it would look. In Civil 3D, you have to extract the corridor features line and then do the things with them. In open roads, this does not happen because when creating the corridor, you can already select its feature line in independent entities without having to extract anything. The Create 3D Line by Slope to Target tool is the same as creating a grading criteria in Civil 3D. Although later you would have to add the lines as a break, something that Civil 3D does a little more automated by already creating the grading surface. However, in open roads, you can make a slope transition. In open roads, the transition between type sections are done with a tool called Create Transition. In the case of Civil 3D, we can program it in the sub-assemblies in SAC by knowing the start and end station of the corridor region. It seems that it is not something that we can program in the Open Roads template section. In Open Roads, when a horizontal target is assigned, what they call control point. If the assigned entity has vertices, the runner does not know how to frequency those vertices, not even in the beginning and end vertices of the entity. In Civil 3D, we do have by default corridor frequency. The Drive tool or Virtual Tour in Open Roads, which is known as 3D Drive Through. It is much more agile than Civil 3D since in Civil 3D it is merely an orbit of the model and shows you everything that you have in model unless you turn off the layers. In Open Roads, it makes the drive on the view that has the default 3D model and 
it will only show profiles of those axes that have their profile active. Therefore, only the 3D axis, the surfaces, the corridors and its mesh will be shown. There are many more things that differ like the template editor could be enhanced much more in open roads since it is part that they have kept from inroads. To add things that Civil 3D has like creating arcs, report messages, surface links and so on. It will take hours if we keep talking like this. So let's conclude this session as we have already discussed the major differences. Let's call it the day. See you in another session. Till then, take care.